Marv, what went wrong for you guys in the first half, and what did you do to fix it there in the second half? Um, I would say just adjusting to the high tempo, you know, just being able to actually do our assignments and fit the right gaps. I felt like those were uh, definitely two differences between the first and the second half. All right. To the far right, in front of Cole. Marv, when you look at the first half, you gave up over 400 yards, but you only allowed them to score 15 points. Is that a testament to what your red zone defense can do against most opponents? Uh, yeah, I would say, you know, they definitely got a lot of yards, but definitely not allowing them to just, you know, score and make points every single time they got into the red zone. And then this was, I think, the most rushing yards you guys have given up this season. Just what did you see from their running backs in this game? Uh, you know, the running backs will be able to, you know, hit the smallest holes and just, you know, be able to bounce it out when they ever, whenever they needed to. The left side, Zach Taylor from Brian Broadcasting. Mar, first I wanted to ask how you're feeling. I know that you had to sit out for a few plays on the sideline. So are you, are you feeling 100%? Yeah, I'm good. Okay. Uh, and that being said, you know, as one of the leaders on the team, what's the mood like in the locker room right now? As you guys are hitting practice again today, I mean, is it disappointment? Is it is it anger? Is it a little bit of everything? Well, you know, we had that, what, I would say 14 to 20 hours, you know, to be a little disappointed in ourselves. But now it's time to move on to the next week and just get ready to bounce back and come, to, you know, together, stronger than ever. Stay on the left side or go Robert Cessna and then we'll go to TV. A couple of things. It seemed like all of a sudden – Defense wasn't out there, and all of a sudden you, you, you took over and made all kind of big plays. Was it kind of a wake-up call for you, how, how they came out and seemingly run right at you? Yeah, I definitely, you know, haven't had that many chances to have teams run at me this year. So when, you know, we needed stops, I tried my best, you know, to contribute to the team and, like, help make stops. Were you kind of surprised how hard they ran, or did they run harder than maybe you thought they would? No, it wasn't, it, you know, it didn't come unexpected, very expected. You know, we play at a high standard, and teams, they're going to bring their best against us as well. So it was definitely, you know, ready for their best. Marv, we're going to go back behind the lights to uh, either from KBDX and then Mike. DeMarvin, you said, you know, the team just, you know, wants to bounce back, move past it. But that being said, Saturday is your last um, home game. So what do you feel like the emotions are going to be like playing at Kyle Field last time this year? I uh, definitely feel like it's going to be very emotional. You know, first time in Kyle Field was crazy. So just imagine the last. It's just it's more, it's supposed to be more memorable, you know. So uh, just ready for that game and just ready to have fun with it. Stay in the back and we'll go to Mike from KAG. DeMarvin, I know obviously Saturday wasn't the ideal defensive performance for you guys, but now you get a chance to respond. So how does this team kind of stay together, and, and what are you expecting response-wise after last week? Uh, staying together, you know, that happens, you know, during practice, working hard, competing against each other when we go on team. And, you know, just bouncing back this week is going to be very important. You know, coming together throughout practice is going to be the biggest thing. Go down front, uh, Brent, from the Santo Express News. <laughs> okay, we'll go with that one. Uh, Coach Fisher has talked about his players, his staff, people staying away from social media. That he, you know, he, he obviously doesn't like it, doesn't have it. What is your approach on that front in terms of social media? Maybe especially after a loss, and I know y'all need it as well for NIL and so forth. But what is your approach with social media in those? Um, my approach with social media, you know, I'm 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 on social media, but just not as much. You know, I try to stay off in like certain amount of days. So like Monday, Tuesday, I'm probably on there. Uh, the rest of the week, no. This one's a little bit out of left field, but I once heard the hardest thing to do in football is catch a punt. Would you agree with that? Have you ever tried to catch a punt? I or definitely you? tried to catch a punt, and let me tell you, though, this is extremely difficult. <laughs> you admire a guy like Anias who, who can yeah. do it and do it with regularity and so forth, and what makes it so difficult? I feel like, you know, when the ball is so high in the air, it's like kind of hard to adjust to, especially when it's windy. So... You know, I don't really don't have that much experience doing it as well, but still, I just know that I have much respect for them. like a nice disabled to consistently catch toes. Thank you. We'll go to Travis right here in front, and then Olin. Hey, yeah, how have you seen Bryce Foster on the other side of the ball uh, develop? Um, what, what what has impressed you, or, or what have you thought has been his biggest um, improvements through through the time he's been? You know, just how he stays calm. You know, if he has an injury, he tries to bounce back as fast as possible and just pick up right where he left off, just being able to communicate with those guys and, you know, consistently give, you know, good snaps and everything. Just, 
he does what he does. He does what he needs to, and he does his job. What's he like off the field? Because I know on Twitter he seems to be a little bit of a character. <laughs> yeah, he's definitely a big goofy guy. You know, definitely got to get on his calves. <laughs> Let's go to Olin, and then we'll go to Justin. Yeah, DeMarvin, um, when you were talking about this game coming up being an emotional game for you, uh, should we just go ahead and interpret that as what we all suspect? Because oh, no. that will be your last home game? I'm just saying in general, like, you know, we got people who came back for the sixth year. So, you know, those guys, it's going to be very emotional for everybody just to uh, play all together for one last time. Okay, and uh, when uh, – when uh, when when people come in and ask you about Texas A and M, um, what is what is you, what what would be your message? What do you say about you know this program? This program has definitely changed. You know the culture here has changed as well, and it's the place to be. Honestly, you know we have our ups and we have our downs. It's just when we have our downs, we get right back up and we continue fighting. All right, we'll go to Justin on your left. Hey, Marv, obviously you're stepping out of SEC play this weekend. Jim always talks about faceless opponents. How do you approach a game like this with Prairie View? You look at their record, and they're pretty good, but we all know they're not an SEC caliber team. So how do you approach a game like this? Just like Jimbo says, our, our opponent is faceless. You know, It's all about us and what we do and how we approach the game throughout the week. Fourth quarter, you're extremely close against Ole Miss, 15-13. There's been some other – your other losses, you've been right there in the fourth quarter. Why do you think maybe there's been so close losses in the fourth you haven't been able to kind of get over the hump in those those close losses? You know, uh, we always try to play full, four full quarters. So in that fourth quarter, we just know it's like at that time it's it's situational football. You know, we got to make a stop. So we got to, you know, get some points to the board. So we just, we've learned over the years and, you know, over this year just how to play good situational, situational football in the fourth quarter. All right, that's all the questions we had, Marv. Thanks. Thank you.